<laughs> I, I'm, I'm amazed how much objection genetically modified foods are receiving from the public. Uh, it smacks of the fear factor that exists at every new emergent science where people don't fully understand it or don't fully know or embrace its consequences and so therefore reject it. What most people don't know, but they should, is that practically every food you buy in a store for consumption by humans is genetically modified food. There are no wild seedless watermelons. There's no, there's, there's no wild cows. There's no long stem roses growing in the wild, although we don't eat roses. You list all the fruit and all the vegetables and ask yourself, is there a wild counterpart to this? If there is, it's not as large, it's not as sweet, it's not as juicy, and it has way more seeds in it. We have systematically, genetically modified all the foods, the vegetables and animals that we have eaten ever since we cultivated them. It's called artificial selection. That's how we genetically modify them. So now we can do it in a lab, and all of a sudden you're going to complain? If you're the complainer type, go back and eat the apples that grow wild. You know something? They're this big and they're tart. They're not sweet like red delicious apples. We manufactured those. That's a genetic modification. Do you realize silk cannot be produced in the wild? The silk worm, as we cultivate it, has no wild counterpart because it would die in the wild. So there's not even any silk anymore. So we are creating and modifying the biology of the world to serve our needs. I don't have a problem with that because we've been doing that for tens of thousands of years. So chill out. <laughs> okay, merci.